Hello, welcome back to a beautiful morning out on the boat. We're going to be heading out to some wrecks and all I've done is I've just stopped off on a little piece of reef just to throw a lure around just because it's such a lovely morning I thought I might as well. We're going to be heading out to some wrecks and depending on what the tide's doing when we get there we'll try fishing some lures for some pollock and then we might even try uh, drifting for some ling we might even put the anchor down for some conger we will just see what happens but with any luck we'll find some fish really is just a stunning morning to be out it's bitterly cold but it's beautiful. We've got about, uh, at the moment now the tide's flooding. We've got a few hours of the flood left. On the way out to the wrecks, if we find any shoals of bait fish, we might stop and try and get some, some live bait. Because I do like using live bait. I think we're great. All I'm going to be using today, on the light stuff, I'm going to be using these scary eels and on the deeper stuff, I'll show you when I'm doing it. I'm running my first drift over the wreck. First wreck that I've got to. And on this rod, I'm fishing a boom. What I've got is I've just got, I think it's called a French boom. I'll show you in a second when I get it all the way up. I've got a French boom and about five or six foot of fluoro and then I've got a sidewinder lure and all you do is you fish I'll bring it all the way up you um, you drift up to the wreck and then retrieve your lure up over it because the things like the pollock are usually sitting just up above the wreck now we're in uh, 190 feet of water Generally what you do is you fish uh, 30 turns from the bottom. Yeah, You've just got a wire boom turned into the line. We're about six foot of fluoro and I've got a sidewinder bloodhead. Just see this one because I've I'm fishing a lure on this one as well. God. I think a boat must have just come past. Go around and try again. Crucial thing when you're fishing like this over a wreck, when you're lower to the bottom, as soon as you hit the bottom you need to start winding, because otherwise you'll just lose everything in the wreck. Tide's a bit too slack at the minute. When the tide's really slack like this, the lures don't fish properly and they're, and they're, they're Predator fish like the pollock and the bass and the cod, they aren't properly on the feed. They're just kind of lazing about. Go a slow jig on this spinning rod. Hopefully we might be able to tempt, some, tempt something out with it. Couldn't have, got, couldn't have got a better drift on a wreck, there just doesn't seem to be anything there. There's a fish. Doesn't feel like a pollock. It's either a pouting or a little codling. Saying that'll prove me completely wrong now, won't it? Big fat pouting. There you go, look. We'll keep him for when we're going to anchor up on the wreck later. 
There we go, well. First fish of the day. It's not the monster we're after, but better than nothing. Trying a different wreck now. The reason I'm keeping it lowering under control is not only so that the boom doesn't come up and twist around the main line, but so if a fish picks it up on the way down, I can feel it. Some gannets diving over there, I think I might go and pay them a visit. Just come in. Oh. I've just come in short to try and get some live bait. I've caught two mackerel and I just chucked. Oh, <laughs> what a beauty this is. Oh, dare I lift it? Oh, wow. Oh, it's got. Oh, this one's actually got a little bit of a deformed mouth, but it doesn't stop it being an absolute corker. Look at that fish. Taking on a taking on a scary's pearl. What an absolute beauty. You see what I mean about its mouth? This has probably seen a hook when it was younger and it's deformed its mouth. There's the lure. What an absolute beast. I'm going to show you the other side of its mouth, look. I'll put this at bean. Probably nearly five pound. What a cracker. Yeah, like I say, literally all I've done is I've, I've come in shore a bit to try and find some live baits. I didn't knock that over. No, no, I'm all right, I'm all right. Going short to try and find some live baits. And I'm just drifting over a little piece of reef. I've got some mackerel feathers down there. I've had, I've had a couple of mackerel, but they're a little bit too big for live baits. So all I'm doing is I was literally just flicking this little lure around while I was waiting for some mackerel to come along. Bass spiked me. What a cracker. <laughs> we'll, have, uh, we'll have a couple more drifts on this little piece of reef. See if we can pick up some more mackerel. And then we are gonna head out to the wrecks. I wanted to, I wanted to go wrecking. I'm gonna go wrecking. We've uh, tried four wrecks already. And they've all just been absolutely barren. So what I'm going to do is, um, we had a lovely escort by some dolphins, I hope the video's turned out. 
we'll uh, carry this drift on for maybe another 50 60 yards and then we'll go around and have one more I'd like half a dozen mackerel we've got that big pouting from earlier and then we will um, see about getting the anchor down Got the baby one. doesn't feel like mackerel actually. Oh no. Mr. Cheeky Balling Ross. Try that drift once more. <laughs> Just coming over that shoal of fish again. Must be little tiny pilchards or something like that. Lord only knows. Lord only knows. might notice you might notice that the butt end of my rod is looking a little bit worse for wear I slipped over on it and cracked it Slipped over on it and cracked it the other day. Oh, oh pilchard. Perfect live bait size. That's what it is. Pilchards. Now that I've got a live bait, I'm going to try a live bait out. And I've got it just on a float there, this rod at the back. Now we're currently in 60 feet of water, but it comes up to about 40 feet. And I've got that float set at 20. We've got a live pilchard on it. So I'm hoping for either a bass or a pollock. 
typically where I've got it now, the floats right in the line of the sun. That's why I'm using a real big float. I've got a float on. Or a big live bait float like that. Just need a couple more baits before we can get out onto the wrecks. Yes. That feels like a better fish. See the size of this pollock. Oh. Now that <laughs> it's a better fish. Look at the size of that pollock. Oh, easy shagger. Float's getting a long way away now. The size of that. See the load there in its mouth. Nailed that, didn't it? Whoa. A cracker. Can't see that floor. Oh, there it is. It's better. It's a fantastic pollock. I don't think you could have asked for better off the wrecks. So to catch it inshore, I'm going to get a photo of this and we'll give it a go. Keep an eye on that float as well. <laughs> Floats just bobbed down. And we've got. <laughs> Thought I'd turn the camera on. I've got. I've just got it to the side of the boat now. Oh shit! We'll have them. If I'd have seen it, I wouldn't have messed about with him. Gently does it, gently does it. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh! Look at the size of that. Oh. I'll tell you what, see the size of this. Come on. The mackerel are flapping around all over the spot. There we go. That was what it was on. Six and roll cut. Six row cox and roll circle, and look at that fish. My God, what a beauty! Ah, my hand! Ah, Christ! Need to be really careful with them because they're covered in spikes. Just stuck two of them in my hand there. Get that out of the way. Let's get a photo of this bass and let's get it back. Oh, two spikes in my hand there. 
ago. One last look at it before it goes back. What an absolute beauty that was. Taken on a, a live, uh, a live bait pilchard on a float. She won't messing about. I love it. I'm going to really quickly run you through this live bait rig. All I've got is a 6 o Cox and Roll circle. I think it's a Mutsu circle. A live pilchard. And I'm just put the hook up through its head like that. It's trying to test me today. Right. All I've got there is I've got a locked in lead of about an ounce and I've got a large sliding float. Literally all I did. Like I said, we're, we're in 60 feet of water, but it goes up to 40 feet. This float here is sat at about 20 feet, maybe 22. And all I've done was I just let it run out away from the boat. And we're drifting that way up over a peak. The fish are sitting behind the peak. So I'll see the peak here on the boat. And then about maybe 20 seconds later, when the float and the bait have gone over the peak, that's when it goes down. Textbook, that's exactly what happened last time. I just finished dealing with that pollock, looked over, and the float bobbed under. Now I thought I'd turn the camera on, but um, I must have missed the button in the fight, and I only, I only realised halfway through the fight when I got it almost to the side of the boat. Right, the float now is about 30 feet away from the boat. So I'm happy with that, so I'll engage the bail arm, check the drag. I'm fishing with a circle hook on there. So you don't, you don't strike, you just wind down and then when the line tightens you lift into the fish. Because what happens there is if you, if you lift into it, it turns the hook into the corner of its mouth. Just like that one. I promise, <laughs> after this drift, we will go to the wrecks. If I'd have known it was a bass of that size, I wouldn't have messed about bringing them mackerel feathers in. I would have left them and brought the bass. Maybe a little bit more line. As we're drifting that way, if you engage the bail arm on the reel, it'll stop line going out. So you'll start dragging the float and the rig behind you. So it doesn't sit vertical sits slightly horizontal. Now I want it up. I want it at a certain distance away from the boat. Just so that the boat's shadow or me banging around doesn't scare the fish away. But when we get to the point where I think that that float and that bait is above the area where the fish are, I'll let the bail arm off again so it sits vertical, so it fishes at the right depth.
another prime pollock. We aren't far away now from where I think the back of the peak is. So I've let the bail arm off that so that the float will now sit vertical. The key is knowing the depth of where you're going to be fishing. Because if you've got your float set at 20 feet and it shallows up to 15 feet, you're going to get snagged every time. Or if it's going to be 60 feet and you've got it set at 15 feet, you might not be deep enough for the fish. Looks like a bass. chunky fish another prime chunky fish I do love these lures there you are Wind is picking up quite a bit now. So I'm toying with whether or not we are going to go off to that wreck. It's like a two mile steam from here. And I don't really want to leave fish. <laughs> One more drift and we'll see. No sooner had I turned the camera off, screaming take on the float. Literally, as soon as I turned the camera off, turned round the rod arch straight over. That was such an aggressive take, I'm inclined to think Pollock. I'd love for it to be a bass. Circle hook, corner of the mouth, pops straight out. Another massive pollock. What an absolute beauty. A real solid fish, is absolutely full. I am going to take this one home. Take this one home for the table. He's a fair size. 
I'd go. Should be seven or eight pound. Fantastic. Again, it was literally just as we got to that killer spot, just at the back of that pig. <laughs> I had honestly, I'd literally just clicked the camera off and the turn around. I hope I turned it back on again in time. But yeah, this is all the rig is. Just a big sliding float. This one is 141 gram. I'm assuming that means that it will take 141 grams to sink it. Got an ounce bullet lead locked in, just a little piece. And they have four feet of 20 pound fluoro ending in a 6 o Mutsu circle. And all I did was, you saw, I just hooked a pilchard and drifted it down behind the boat. Perfect. <laughs> I love it when it works out. This is our last live pilchard. I figured we'd use the live baits up down in here because we're catching fish here. And then when I get out to the wrecks, I might put a wrecking rig on. We'll see what the drift's like. Might see if we can get a ling on the drift. If the tide's not too strong, we'll get the anchor down. We're actually running a slightly different drift this time. We're about a hundred feet away from where we drifted the last couple of times. Oh. Cheeky little guy took it right now. Right next to the boat. Calm down. Just covered in spikes everywhere. There's the hook. There's the fish. And there's a the helicopter. I've got two takes right below the boat, so the fish are following the lure right up until I'm just going to lift it out of the water. I'm stuck because I'm trying to leave the camera running. I'm trying to leave the camera running for if I get a take so that I can show you. <laughs> but I'm going to end up running out of battery. Another nice little pollock. I do like this low. It's getting a little bit battered now. Look, you can see it. And teeth marks in it, and it's lost both of its eyes. Still going strong though.
literally the tide's dropped off to nothing. We've just got slack water in a minute. Which isn't isn't a good time to fish. For, uh, isn't a good time to fish with lures. I was hoping we could have had one last drift on that little piece of reef there. Drifting with the float over here. We've got a little bit of wind which is moving us along. So hopefully we can pick up one last fish on that live bait. We'll have a quick run out to that wreck and see if we can't find a link. It all depends on what this wind does. Little baby Pollock. Absolutely mullered that one. Well, I've given it every chance. I've got here just at the right time for the tide to drop the way now. So I'll, um, I'll start rigging up. I'll start rigging up my big bait rod and then we'll head out to that wreck. Kiting around, which makes me think bass. Can't see because it's in the sun. They just love these lures. Come on. Trying his best to spike me. There you go, look. Lean fish. Popped the hook out himself, aren't they? They're stunning, aren't they, these? But they're absolutely covered in spines. Every one of these has got a spike, all of those, those. We've got a real big one up back of here. Well, I don't mind ending on that. Let's see what them wrecks hold. Let's hope these ones down here have got a little bit more life on than those ones we had this morning. Floats come down. I'd literally, I'd literally just started the engine because I was going to pack up and we're going to go. I just looked round. I was like, "Where's that float gone?" Still got the float under the water. <laughs> That float's set at 20 feet as well, so he has... Oh, floats just at the surface now. Is 
Oh, he's waiting to shun, I can't see what it is. It's a massive bass. Oh, come round here. What a monster. Oh. I wasn't going to risk getting the net. <laughs> Look at that. What a stunning fish! There's a circle hook right in the corner of its mouth, just as designed. Oh, I've got water on the lens, oh no! Let's get that cleaned off. What an absolute beaut! Don't know what he weighs, but I'll tell you what, he's up there. Beast. I'm gonna have to get a photo of this one. Whoa, it's a beauty. I've got out to the wrecks. The one that I wanted to go on to, it's got fishing gear all over it, so I've had to come to another one. It's not ideal. As I suspected, the wind's picked up and it's brought with it a bit of swell. I'm just lowering down, we're just coming up to it now, and I'm just lowering down my first rig. Now I'm hoping that we're not going to be drifting too fast, half a knot max, so that I'll be able to drift slowly across the wreck, hopefully pick out one of the lead. That's the plan anyway. I'll show you the rig when I get it up. got to really pay attention when you're doing this because the fish are right in where all the snags are so you've got to have your rig right in where the snags are if you're not paying attention you'll either snag into the wreck or if you do get a fish and you don't get it out of the wreck quick enough you can get snagged up By dodging the boat up ahead, I'm slowing down the drift so that my bait spends more time near the wreck. Must be pouting. The definite bite there. Ling do give a real good bite. I got myself so I was sat directly above the wreck, dropped my bait down so it just banged on bottom, just managed to dodge it head one knock and that was it, there was a fish on. So when there's a bit of sea and a bit of tide running like this you've got to be on the ball. 
Now it's it's a method for link, but you do sometimes catch congas. Not this time. There's your link. There it is. Calm down. You need to be careful with these because they have got hellish teeth. There we go. Them teeth in there. Oh, poor guy's got a leech stuck on his eyeball. I'm saying that's the least of his worries right now, isn't it? There you go, a nice speckly ling. Right. Now that I've had a fish, I can take time to show you the rig. <laughs> All it is, is my, I call it a wrecking rig, my wrecking rig. It's dead simple. I put a link in, in here to show you how to make it. There it is, look, just a two hook wrecking rig and all I'd done was I'd put a mackerel fillet on the top and a mackerel flapper on the bottom and a 10 ounce lead. Quite often you'll find that your ling will pick up the top hook and your conger will pick up the bottom hook. Well, we'll go around and try that again. I'm currently being boozed by a lot of dolphins. I don't know if you're going to get to see them, they're all around me. Dolphins are everywhere. You can see them all. Now I've hooked into a fish and it's got me in a wreck. I think these dolphins have come to see. See how it, see how it plays out. Literally dropped, felt one bang like that. And that was it, it's in the wreck. There's not really much you can do. Especially not when you're drifting anyway. No. Try and work it out. That's fish. Amazingly, what I'd managed to do was by steaming around in circles, I'd managed to let the fish pull it out, pull itself out of the snag. And I just lowered it back down because I thought that fish might still be there. It doesn't always work out, but it's worth trying. Well, he's unhooked himself. There you go. Another nice ling. A cracking fish. Now ling, they don't cope well with the depth. They bring them up and the swim bladders blow, that's what that, that bag is inside of its mouth. Now you can, with some species, you can send them back and they are okay. Ling aren't really one of them. Conger eel will fight all the way at the surface, you'll go and swim all the way back again. A ling generally, once you've caught it, it's game over for the ling. But as it is, it's delicious. So this, this, definitely, this definitely will go home for the table. We'll go around and we'll try one more drift and see if we can get one more ling out. That's been all right, so all I'd done, all that had happened 
was oh that you can see what had the fish on look at how chewed up all the line is so when it hit the bottom wham got fish on this hook and it pulled me straight into a snag and all I did was instead of pulling for a break I just steamed the boat up steamed it round and round in circles trying to find a good angle to pull it out as it was all I did was I just got sat just got sat on top of it sat directly on top of it and just left it a little bit of slack so I could just keep feeling it and what I could feel was I could feel the lead bump bumping so I knew that it was the fish had, had taken that pink hook and had got itself wrapped round something because I could feel the lead still banging so when I give it a little bit of slack the fish come out of the hole yanked into it and wound up as it was that fish got off but when I lowered it back down again I picked up a fish on this hook as well that's all the bait is look I've taken the, the fillet off one side and I've kept the, the flapper of the other I like uh, I like having the flapper on the bottom just personal preference but I think the bigger bait should be down on the bottom And this fillet, all I do is I just put it through a couple of times and twist it over like that. And we're ready to go. I'm sat right on top of the wreck again. This wind's picking up terribly. We've got wind against tide now. So just Just gently bumping it along the bottom. Feeling out for if it starts to rise, because that means I'm coming onto the wreck. Feeling out for it, giving a little knock, like a bite. Because the bites are different, you'll be able to tell the difference between like a pouting bite and a ling bite. difficulty we're facing, the wind's going in that direction, the tide's going in that direction. So my line's running away from me towards the sun and the boat is being blown in that direction. So being able to keep a bait on the wreck is difficult. So you can see all by dodging the boat up into the wind, I'm slowing it down from going that way. See the dolphins. Oh. There's a bite straight away, look. Try and give that fish a little bit more time to find the bait. Whatever this is, it is small. I'm expecting pouting. What did I say? A jumbo pouting. Greedy so and so. He'll go for the pot. Now all I'm doing by all I'm doing by dodging a boat astern is meaning that I get a longer drift so I don't have to keep steaming up and round and up and round.
trying to get so the camera's not looking into the sun. This one feels like a better fish. A lot more like rasps and head nods. Could just be a better ling, but we'll see. Now she is a lump. Look at the size of that one. See there, look, taking on the bottom hook of the wrecking rig. Now that is a better fish. No matter which way you try and get the boat, it's always so the camera is facing the sun. A nightmare. Boom. And I'm covered in slime. That is a better fish. That might even... That'll be... That'll be close to 20 pounds. Good. Nah, 16. 16 to 18 pounds. What a cracker. And that will do us. Don't need any more than that. Oh. See them teeth in there. So we've got a fantastic pollock and some amazing ling. And all that was there I hope you can hear me over that helicopter. All that was there is I just planned the day according to what the tide was doing. I knew that in the morning it would be better for fishing with lures. And then, as it was, I'd, I'd kind of give myself two options in the afternoon. I could have said we'll either go, we'll anchor up or we'll drift depending on the conditions. Now the wind picked up a little bit earlier than usual. I suspected it might do that, which is why I stayed in there longer, fishing with the lures and the live baits. Because I would have hated to have come out here and put the anchor down, and then it picked up like this, and we'd just been boshed around all over the place, wind against tide. So all I did instead, was I just drifted it. And you saw, you saw that the wind's going in this direction, the tide's going in that direction, your line just runs away from you. So all I did instead was I just kept knocking the boat astern, knocking the boat into the wind, to try and keep my lines like vertical rather than drifting away and by just just dodging the boat and keeping it on top of the wreck I managed to pull them three fantastic fish out I mean that last one there is an absolute bruiser the bites were quick as well like I don't I don't know if I showed you properly if you got to see it but literally you get your bait down in the wreck because you want to be right inside the wreck just knock a couple of times and you feel the first little tremor then I just, didn't, no, just nudged it a couple of times just to give the fish a chance to get hold of it and then you lift into it and it is crucial that you'll get them fish out of that wreck immediately just like that second one it got me, got me bound up in a wreck and I, I was 10 minutes steaming round trying to get it out uh, don't know how many bass we had four, five no five, maybe might have even had six with them little, with them little ones. Half a dozen bass, half a dozen pollock, three cracking ling, all by just planning your day according to what the tide was doing. I hope this has been interesting for you. I mean, them dolphins as well all day, fantastic. Now this wind's picking up, so I'm gonna have to start motoring. What an amazing day. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope this helps. Uh, please subscribe and if you, know, if you know anybody that might enjoy the videos or if you know anybody that you think might benefit 
Share them on, please. Definitely send them my way. Have a good one.